Hello and welcome to Meeps Math Matters. Uh, we are back doing Infinity is Not a Number Part 2, Electric Boogaloo, no, I mean, I'm sorry, The Rationals. We'll get to that in a moment. So let's remember in Part 1, we looked at the definition of countable infinity. Countable infinity, our eight, our lazy eight here. Um, and we looked at the canonical countable infinity, which is of course one, two, three, or you know, you can start with zero if you want. Also, we showed that it's the same infinity as the even numbers. You can do the same thing with the odds. And then also, integers, okay? And showed how you proved something was countably infinite, etc. So we're going to look at the rational numbers, and if you remember from when we proved square root of 2 is irrational, um, that rational numbers are numbers that can uh, be written as p over q, okay, where p and q are integers. And you cannot divide by 0, and why you cannot divide by 0, I will leave to another episode of infinity is not a number. So now we want to figure out, yes, obviously the rational numbers are infinite because we have inf infinite subsets. Obviously the counting numbers are all rational, you just have q equals 1. So let's see um, if the rationals are countable, and to do that I'm going to start with something geometric actually. So here we have a picture of, we're, this is going to be a graph, but we start with the number line. So we have 0 right here, 1, 2, etc. Going both in the positive and negative directions. And remember when we were looking at the um, integers and the way we, remember the way you prove something is countable is you just need to do a one-to-one -one correspondence between the counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., in whatever infinite set you're wanting to see if it's countable or not. Um, and the way we did that with the integers is we started at 0, then we went to 1, then negative 1, and then 2, and then negative 2. So we were just hopping back and forth, moving from the center out, and eventually, quote, we would cover all of the integers. It's a process. Okay, infinity here, it's not a number, it's a process. And this process, process is how do we make a list such that we get all of the members of the set? doesn't matter what the order is. Ordering doesn't matter. Uh, the important part is that we hit all of the numbers or all of the items in the infinite set. We already knew the integers are a countable, countably infinite set. But what about all the points, okay, q, comma, p, where q and p are integers. So these are points with integer or integral coordinates. So for example, let me just pick this one right here. This is uh, the point with coordinates 4, comma, 2. Okay, the first is how many units in the horizontal direction, and the second number is how many units in the vertical direction. Okay, so this is interesting. We have got a set which involves kind of combining two infinite sets. So it's almost like infinity times infinity. Is this, is this also cannibal? And the answer here is yes. I'm going to show you how this is done, and I'm just going to show you one of the ways. Okay, one of the ways that you're going to do this. I'm just going to make it simple and you can come up with your own method because the idea is how do I get every point in a list, in some kind of order list. Now, of course, I'm going to start with zero because that's easy and then I'm going to go to, to one comma zero. Then I'm going to go up, I'm going to hit this point and you might see and then I'm going to hit this point. Okay. So now I'm, I'm making kind of a square here. Okay, so now I have all of these squares within, quote, one 
unit as it were. So I have 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, uh, 0, 1, uh, negative 1, comma 1, negative 1, comma 0, etc. Now I'm going to make this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a spiral. Okay, so this is going to be an ever-growing spiral and I leave it as an exercise to the reader and what I leave it as an exercise to the reader means if you ever come across this in text means yes this is true uh, yes you know you can prove it the student probably can prove it however the problem is so dang tedious I do not want to take up precious page space okay so I'm leaving it as an exercise to you to figure out if I give you you know, Q and P, can you tell me which step that you actually hit that point? That's not really important, but if you see using this method, okay, I, c I will call zero, zero comma zero is point number one, one comma zero is point number two, etc. I can make a list and by ever spiraling out, I'm going to hit every single point. Now that's nice, isn't it? So this is, this is a countably infinite set, infinite set, sorry. So this is countable, yes. So you may be saying to yourself, okay, this is nice. I've got these ordered pairs. It's a countable set, um, countably infinite set. What has that got to do with rationals? Well, I didn't pick those variables Q and P just for the heck of it. Remember how we like the P over Q as a rational. So now I am creating a correspondence between these ordered pairs and the rational numbers. And remember, all rational numbers can be represented as P divided by Q. Okay, now um, I put this double arrow. It doesn't exactly work because Q cannot equal zero. Okay, so we are getting rid of all of the things on the vertical axis. Woo, those are all gone. Okay, so all of those points are gone. But it is fine. What we are showing is that um, these ordered pairs uh, that are going to represent the rational numbers are going to be a subset of all of these ordered pairs that have integer coordinates. But then you're saying, well, but we're going to get the same number showing up many times. So because, say, okay, P over Q, well, I have one half, but I also have two fourths. What's up with that? This is where I got sneaky. Let's look at these points. Two comma one, four comma two. Also, negative two comma negative one and uh, negative four comma negative two, they form a straight line going through the origin. Okay, that's kind of a straight line, not to scale. And the slope is one half, or p over q, which is why I picked the um, representation I did. Doesn't really have any meaning. Um, all that means is okay. What you can do when you're doing your little spiral out, as you hit these points, ones that are not allowed, like the ones on the vertical axis, you just skip over them. And then if you hit, if you hit a point, okay, this point is already covered by the zero. So basically everything that's going to be on the straight line coming out of it is just going to be eliminated. Um, and it doesn't matter. The whole point is that we have a way to create a list in order that we're going to hit all the rationals. And so we have proven the rationals, which is this kind of fancy Q, um, is the notation that's often used. The rationals are countable. Okay, and next, not right now, we're going to see something about uh, what, what happens when we combine the rationals with the irrationals to get all of the real numbers. As always, you can email me at marypat.campbell at gmail.com and remember, to always spread the math love.